are these people? David Miller, Professor David Miller, and I believe he worked he's at Cambridge or one of the British universities. All my the end, I'm sure the bio at the bottom will say which university that is. All right. Mossad and its network of little helpers, the Cyanim. And I've heard this term referred to, but I really didn't know much about it. So I wanted to bring it. I didn't know if anybody else had either, but I'm sure you see a familiar face up there or two. He says the Mossad have been exposed as targeting the International Criminal Court, including directly threatening its personnel and their families. What else do they get up to? All right. Zionist intelligence agencies launched a war on the International Criminal Court in January 2015. This was when it was confirmed. Oh, yep, that was done under Obama. Um, this was when it was confirmed <laughs> that Palestine would join the court after it was recognized as a state by the UN General Assembly. Israel's intelligence agencies routinely surveilled the ICC's current chief prosecutor, Kareem Khan, his predecessor, Fatal Ben Souda, and other and dozens of other ICC and UN officials. Israeli intelligence also monitored materials that the Palestinian Authority submitted to the prosecutor's office and surveilled employees at four Palestinian human rights organizations whose submissions are central to the probe. Who holds them accountable? Multiple agencies, including the Mossad, Shin Bet, and the quote-unquote National Security Council were involved in, in addition to the occupation military, the IOF. Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs under Gilad Erdan was involved in the surveilling of Palestinian human rights organizations that were submitting reports to the ICC. None of this is okay. It's reported that, quote, a large whiteboard in an Israeli intelligence department contained the names of about 60, a whiteboard. 60 people under Is this that Congresswoman's whiteboard? No, it's not. It, it is not. Um. That, that's Katie Porter. <laughs> and her whiteboard is like tiny and the size of her dome, maybe. This is like almost, this is more like Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Charlie connecting the stuff with the red string whiteboard. Gotcha. Right. A large whiteboard Makes is, sense. okay, half of them Palestinians and half from other countries, including UN officials and ICC personnel. So they drew up, they thought they were the cops. Mossad, the foreign intelligence agency of the Zionist colony, was involved in attempting to recruit senior ICC officials. The former head of the Mossad, Yossi Cohen, allegedly threatened the chief prosecutor of the ICC in a series of secret meetings in which he tried to pressure her into abandoning a war crimes investigation. This is true. You can not want it to be, but this happened. Cohen's covert contacts with the ICC's then prosecutor, Fatou Ben Souda, took place in the period leading up to her decision to you. open a formal investigation into alleged war crimes and crimes against humanity in Palestine. Mm. Cohen is alleged to have told her, quote, you should help us and let us take care of you. You don't want to be getting into things that could compromise your security or that of your family. Uh-huh. We even investigated not, ourselves. Be a shame of something happened And we found to we've done nothing wrong. Be a shame if something happened to uh, her. Must too much. also took a keen interest in Ben Suda's family members and obtained transcripts of secret recordings of her husband. How do they know that? Uh, good question. Regime officials then attempted to use the material to discredit the prosecutor. Cohen met with Ben Suda on a number of occasions, including ambushing her during a meeting with Joseph Kabila, the then president of the Democratic Republic of Congo. It appears he was a Mossad agent of influence. Of course he was. Mossad also oh. targeted Ben Suda's successor, the current chief prosecutor, Kareem Khan. The ICC confirmed there had been several forms of threats and communications that could be viewed as attempts 
to unduly influence its activities, unquote. And that's mm. probably to be to understate it at best and much worse. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is said to have taken a keen interest in the operation. No surprise there. Even sending intelligence teams instructions and areas of interest regarding their monitoring <laughs> of ICC officials. One source... He french fried when he should have pizza You're going to have a bad time. Yes. One source stressed that Netanyahu was obsessed, obsessed, obsessed with finding out what materials the ICC was receiving. Dude, just go to fucking Twitter. It's pretty easy, right? We were seeing it every day. So, like I said, this, this article yep. is about the Cyanim. What are the Cyanim? Mossad has carried out a wide range of operations all over the world. They've involved deception, theft, extortion, blackmail, torture, assassinations, assassinations, and even false mm -hmm. flag bombings. Mm, false flag bombing. Mm, maybe people should Google some stuff. Maybe they should Google it. Maybe. Um, something, something, Levon, right? Something like um, that. The role of the Mossad is often like overlooked when the role of the so-called Israel lobby is discussed, but it is an integral part of the strategy of the Zionist movement. Yeah, they're the smartest intelligence service on the planet. Much smarter than the fucking CIA. And here's a few examples. They created a fake terror group in Lebanon, the FLLF, and used it to claim credit for a series of bombings of civilian targets killing hundreds. Remy Brulin has documented this in detail. In Egypt, in 1954, early on, and we know when, when Israel was created, or whatever you want to call it, uh, the UN allowed it to begin existing, but six years later, the Mossad bombed Egyptian and Western-owned civilian targets in an attempt to blame Muslims or the left. We've heard about many of these things happening in a lot of Muslim countries to try to drive them, the, the Jews, to Israel. Secretive, Jews, 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 Jews. secretive intelligence agency <laughs> Native uh, created a vast international campaign claiming Soviet Jewry faced a new red anti-Semitism. The real objective was the demographic imperative to recruit settler colonialists. No surprise. A book they gotta find a they gotta find a different word other than Jewry. That yeah. does not <laughs> does not sound, that sounds like a slur. Yeah, but you know, what know. do I know? But it says a book, um, a book titled The New Red Anti-Semitism, a Symposium. On top of, top huh? of Native. It says the Nadav. The T. That you would always call it Native. Yes. Yeah. Right? But, um, um, <laughs> a book called The New Red Anti-Semitism, <laughs> a Symposium, was part of that campaign, published in 1953 by Commentary, the flagship neoconservative journal published by a Zionist group, the American Jewish Committee. Many, yep. Brit many British Zionists worked directly with Nativ. They included the academic Colin Schindler and Mike Wine of the Board of Deputies, who was their first full-time Soviet Jewry officer. Remember, this is a British. This is this is written from a British perspective. David is a British professor, so we're getting names and British. stuff that we're not usually familiar with in the states, but. Later, he was an aide of the convicted fraudster Gerald Ronson in the Community Security Trust, or the CST. This is connecting a whole lot of dots across the pond, showing that this was a global effort and that there was just as much propaganda pushed out and operations in the UK and everywhere else around the world, as David will continue, that Wine also cooperated in a Mossad operation when the agency was in global charge of attempting to institutionalize the idea that anti-Semitism was Judeophobic, a process that ended with the creation of the so-called working definition of quote-unquote anti-Semitism. Forgetting that Palestinians are also Semites and Arabs are also Semites. They just tried to carve that inconvenient fact out and, and ignore it. 
Yep. Mossad effectively kidnapped hundreds of Jewish kids in Morocco to recruit further settlers. Wow, I never heard that story. It owed its success in part yep. to the fact that Mossad had previously set up the Moroccan intelligence services and they were consequently penetrated by Zionists. Mossad's David well, We Littman, talked about them doing this. Hmm? We talked about this doing this in, in Lebanon, too, and Syria. Yep. Right, where it's like they'll, they'll set up coffee shops and fund whole things for youth people to show up. You know, it's similar to the, the Iran thing, right, where, you know, suddenly there's this color revolution you know right like that's what they're trying to push for hmm. that ends hold. up you know usually installing some nato you know dictator so right. um but but yeah uh david Litt mossad's david Littman and his wife giselle ran the op david even wrote a book about the op code named operation mural Wow. Mm. His wife Giselle is better known as arch Islamophobe Bat Yeor. She popularized the racist the Right? She popularized the racist theory of Eurabia. What the whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, Most it sounds exactly like what you think it should be, so Oh my god. Mossad used a honey shop to get rid of all the brown folks <laughs> and replace it with Europeans. Yeah. Um, Mossad used the honey trap in 1986 ugh. to lure Mordecai Vanunu, the heroic nuclear whistleblower from the UK to Italy. Say that five times fast. Mordecai Vanunu? Fun to say. That's <laughs> right. Vanunu? All right. Vanumi. So they could kidnap him, and he's still not free, by the way, because the UK doesn't mm. have a due process law like we do. They could indefinitely keep people in jail like we just learned and saw. For 1901 days. Mossad also assassinated famous Palestinian cartoonist and activist Naji Al Ali, whose most famous creation was yeah. widely known as the, the widely known character Andala on the streets of West London in 1987. Margaret Thatcher expelled a Mossad operative who was the handler of the assassination, Ari Regev, as a result. And normally, British, dip, you know, the British Prime Minister doesn't expel a diplomat for, for no reason. They probably had pretty good evidence. Diplomatic there. immunity. Diplomatic immunity. That makes me think of Lethal <laughs> Weapon 2, like instantly, just hearing those two <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I know, dude. You need to put it on the soundboard, but yeah. Mossad used British, mm. French, and Irish passports to fly a team of assassins to Dubai in 2010 to torture and kill a Palestinian leader. Foreign Secretary David Miliband expo expelled a Mossad officer as a result. And then we've got intelligence operative Shai Massot was famously filmed in 2017 bragging about his intent to take down UK Conservative Minister Alan Duncan. So these are just a handful of examples of Mossad operations in the UK. Mossad officers referred to as Katsas operate with the with the aid of a worldwide network of helpers called Sayanim. Even the ADL mm. admits that the Sayanim exist. Rebecca Fetterman, an anti-Semitism analyst at the ADL, says, quote, there is a system of Sayanim. That's a reality. There are people who help Israeli intelligence assets around the world, unquote. Yeah, we know. Former Mossad operative Vic Victor Ostrovsky has claimed that there are several thousand Sayanim in the UK alone. Perhaps the most famous Sayan was the media tycoon Robert Maxwell, might have heard of him, who worked for Mossad for years and was buried with full state well, we honors. Certainly, we've certainly heard of his offspring. Yes, well, we're going to talk about um, that. Oh. But Robert Maxwell worked yes. for the Mossad for years and was buried with full state honors on the Mount of Allahs, which is Jabal al Zayatun. Mm. Observers might be forgiven for thinking the whole Maxwell family has been Mossad adjacent, given the role of, his, of many of his nine children. His sons, mm. Ian and Kevin Maxwell, have set up a very spooky-looking, relentlessly Zionist, yet 
obscure think tank in London, the Combating Jihadist Terrorism and Extremism, the Cogit. Son of a bitch! Yep. Isabel, writes Alan McLeod, in the Media Award honoree, another of the nine Maxwell siblings, was described by investigative journalist Whitney Webb, another Indie Media Award honoree, as where I figured we were going. As Israel's backdoor into Silicon <clears throat> Valley, Israel used Robert's connections to strike deals with some of the tech world's biggest players, including Microsoft co-founders Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Now, if you read and listen uh -huh. to Whitney, Isabel and Bill Gates were a thing for a while. She told, yep. his, she told Israeli newspaper Haaretz that she saw her work in tech as an opportunity to continue her father's commitment to the country, unquote. In 2001, Isabel vowed to work on things, on only things involving Israel. In a more overtly political move, she also accepted a position as the governor of the Shimon Peres Center for Peace because everything is upside no, down. wrong with that. Everything is upside down when it comes to intel. Remember, black is white. They come up mm -hmm. with the most fucking ghastly names for this shit. Another daughter, of course. Yes. Another daughter, Ghislaine, of course, worked very closely with Jeffrey Epstein in his compromat gathering and sex trafficking operation, allegedly, widely regarded as run on behalf of the Mossad. And Les Wexner, who may or may not be a Sionim or uh, a Sion or a, uh, a runner. But make no mistake, the Mossad is active today in the UK and elsewhere. Bill Ackman, anyone? <clears throat> Aiming to subvert democracy and ensure that the political culture of the West is wholly colonized by Zionists or their little helpers. As it says here, the opinions mentioned in this article do not necessarily reflect the opinion of Alamayadi, though they probably do, but rather express the opinion of its writer exclusively. David Miller is an, ex an investigative researcher, broadcaster, and academic. He is the founder and co-director co of the lobbying watchdog Spinwatch and the editor of powerbase.info. He can be found on Twitter at tracking underscore power. David Miller has been on Who with... Who are these people? David Miller's been on with Misty when she had her TNT radio show. He's been all over the place. Um, but that's a good question. Mm. Why isn't mine working? Come on. Gonna I don't get know. Three times at some point. Damn it, Stream Deck yep. reconnecting. Garbage. Okay. My man. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. My man. Now we'll all do my it stream live. Deck, now, now all my Stream Decks are crash. Oh, no. There we go. Thought everything, everything was dying. Okay. David Miller, good, good piece. I've and I can't get up. That's what my stream deck is saying right now, for sure. Uh, the at least the ones on the iPad. Uh, it's, it's boo. I say boo this man. Who are these boo people? This man. Thank you. That's what I was waiting for. 